So in this video, I'll be going over my thoughts on the Ohio State cornerback, Jeffrey Okuda. This is my first video on the new channel, so I'm excited about it. I hope you guys enjoy. The format won't change. I really did videos like this for Isaiah Simmons and Andrew Thomas. So this is basically the same format, just a different channel. So hopefully you guys still enjoy. So let's get into it. I mean, I wrote down my thoughts about him, so we'll go over his, uh, you know, regular stuff first. So his name, Jeffrey Okuda. We know that. 6'1", 200 pounds, a good size for a corner right there. 2019 stats were nine pass breakups and three interceptions, 35 tackles. And my thoughts on watching him, and I always, you know, try to give a disclaimer here. I mean, I did not watch every single snap of him in college. I'll be honest. I mean, I probably, I think I watched about four or five full games of him um, on YouTube. So, I mean, you know, you can get a pretty good feel, as I say, for a player by watching every snap, you know, for, I mean, like four or five games, I think is a pretty good uh, a sample size right there. But it's not everything. So, I mean, you know, my word's not going to mean everything, obviously. So, obviously, he's a good athlete. You know, that's really self-explanatory right there. <clears throat> can make open field tackles, which is definitely big. That's something I always look for in cornerbacks. I mean, yeah, you can play good coverage, but can you tackle? I mean, that's a big thing as well. I mean, you have to tackle on run plays. You have to tackle the wide receivers you're guarding. I mean, you could have a guy like uh, Janoris Jenkins, for instance. I'm sure a lot of Giants fans are familiar with him, who could play good corner at times, but sometimes will take plays off in tackling. Well, I did not see that from Jeffrey Okuda. But look, I mean, Janoris Jenkins is a veteran. He's been around for a long time, so I can't really hold that against him. His ball instincts are really good. I mean, every time the ball's in the air, he's like in a one-on-one -on -one man versus man situation. He's in a really, you know, always in a good spot, always makes a play on the ball, so it's very rare to see him get beat deep. I mean, I saw him get beat on some plays, like the curls and the slants and whatnot, but for deep balls, very rare to see Jeffrey Okuda get beat in the games I watched, at least. <clears throat> He's definitely the best cornerback in this draft. I mean, I don't know who else would be better than him, honestly. I mean, Christian Fulton from LSU is one that comes to mind, but I still don't think he'd be better. I mean, I think for sure Jeffrey Okuda would be the first cornerback to go in this draft. I'd be pretty shocked if it wasn't him. Um, his projected 40 time, this is from Walter Football, so it's not certain, obviously. The um, the combine hasn't happened yet, so this is just a projection, but his projected 40 time is 4.52. And for a cornerback, you'd like to see it in the 4-4 or 4-3s, obviously. But for a guy like Okuda, it's not concerning to me because he he has the body type where like you don't need to have crazy good speed like his arms are so long and he's just super athletic so I'm not going to be concerned if he runs like a 4 5 2 4 5 3 5 4 you know whatever it's not going to concern me too much I mean if you get in the 4 6s yeah that's a concern for a cornerback but still I feel like he'd be fine with a 4 5 he can make some big hits at times as well so don't be fooled by the 200 pounds I know it's not like a big hitting type of guy you would like a yeah, I mean cornerbacks aren't too big anyway but this guy can make some big hits I mean I saw at least two or three of them there was one on like one of the first plays of the game he lit up a guy on like a, a end around play I'll try to get the videos in here so you guys can see so there was that there was a play where it was a late hit he was flagged for it but it was another big hit where he just knocked the guy on his ass and it was very nice to see so that was cool and you know, he seems to be the type of player that plays on one side of the field, and I can't hold that against him because that's just what, I don't know if every single cornerback in college does that or if it's just like an Ohio State thing. I mean, in the NFL, obviously, it's different based off what team you go to, who your defensive coordinator is. I mean, some defensive coordinators want you to play on one side of the field. I mean, we saw that with like Josh Norman for a while, whether it was with Washington or the Panthers, he just played on one side of the field. I'm sure other cornerbacks do it as well. But then you have some cornerbacks like, you know, Darrell Rivas back in the day who would just travel with every best wide receiver on the uh, opponent's team so it really depends what your head coach or defense coordinator wants you to do it really depends on what team he goes to it's like I can't really make an assumption about that right now obviously if you went to the Giants I mean I think the Giants do matchups I don't really think the Giants have like a one side of the field type thing so I think it would just depend on the matchups honestly so there was that but I can't hold it against him and I think, um, what's next we have so he's susceptible to slants and curls I said that before some comeback routes as well but it's honestly nothing concerning. It's like, you know, it happens. You're not going to be 100%, you know, incompletions for you as a corner. It's going to be impossible. There's going to be completions against you. But nothing I saw with Okuda in the four or five games I watched was, like, concerning to the point where I was like, oh, this guy's getting, like, toasted out here. No, like, it was not that at all. He would allow some, like, five or ten-yard completions here and there. But for the most part, he was always making plays on those balls. So, I mean, I really can't say anything bad about him for that. And some people said, I mean, I heard this from some people, I mean, some, like, draft analysis people and whatnot, that he's a better prospect than Jalen Ramsey was. And Jalen Ramsey, um, I think he was a top, I think he was a third or fourth pick. I think he was a third, no, was he? Because it was Joey Bosa. Then it was, 
maybe Zeke and then maybe it was the fifth pick. He was top five of whatever it was. It was three, four, five. I think it was five. So it went to Jacksonville as the fifth pick, fourth pick, whatever it was. Had a really nice career in Jacksonville. Of course, did not work out too well. Then went to the Rams and I guess had some success there. It wasn't all that great, but some success so far. And he's still a very young player, so he has you know more than half of his career ahead of him. But Jalen Ramsey so far has been one of the better corners in the NFL. So if this guy can have a Jalen Ramsey type career in the NFL, he would definitely be worth a top five pick in my opinion and <clears throat> for the um what's the word i can't even think about it now the positional value which i talk about all the time with dave gettleman and stuff like that which is something i wish he would look into more and hopefully he's better at down the road but <clears throat> positional value is obviously just like it's always like how i complain about running backs how I, how I don't think it's a valuable position it's just like some positions just hold more value than others i mean like uh pass rushers more valuable than like you know a safety or like a um, a quarterback is more important than a wide receiver or, you know, something like that. Or, you know, like an offense, a left tackle is more important than a running back. It's just like you have positions and some are just held to higher regards than others, basically. So a cornerback, very high position on the position of value chart right there. So if we took him at number four overall, I wouldn't be too mad about it. It wouldn't be the end of the world to me. Obviously, I wish we got a guy that, you know, hopefully Chase Young falls to us. That would be the best news right there. But I think a player like Andrew Thomas at left tackle or even Isaiah Simmons playing inside linebacker would probably benefit this team more because the Giants already have young cornerbacks. I mean, I want to see DeAndre Baker grow even more next year. I don't want to see a guy come in here and overshadow him. I mean, of course, it would help to play with a better guy, you know, next to you or alongside you. But we have Sam Beal as well and then Ballantyne. And, you know, hopefully we get a, a slot corner in the draft or free agency. So we'll see about that. So I think we have enough corners on this team, honestly. So I wouldn't be mad if the Giants picked him. But if they do, I hope they trade back. I don't think they need to take him at four. And I'm sure Okuda might go to the Detroit Lions. I mean, if I had to guess right now, I would say he prob the, the Lions should probably trade back. But based off the mock drafts I looked at, they probably did not include trades. And they had Jeffrey Okuda going number three overall, which I can definitely see. That would be a nice fit for them playing alongside Darius Slay. That would be very cool for the Lions but um honestly I think they trade back so if the Giants are sitting there and you know some teams are calling the phone because they want to trade up for a quarterback then I really hope the Giants try to trade back trade back whether it's one spot or two spots with the Chargers or Dolphins or whether the Colts or the you know the Jaguars or the, the Panthers want to give them a ton of picks hopefully that's the case but I wouldn't really reach on Okuda I don't think taking him number four is too bad, but the Giants have other needs, if you know what I mean. So I wouldn't be mad about it, but we'll see what happens. Um, you know, there's definitely many options. Or, you know, Dave Gettleman, every draft kind of surprises us. You know, I mean, honestly, I did not really agree with his last two first round picks, and so far they look fine. I mean, you know, I'll never agree with the Saquon Barkley pick, but that's just me. And Daniel Jones, of course, I wasn't too happy about it on draft night, but he seems like he has the tools to be a franchise quarterback, so we'll see how that plays out. As long as he fixes the, the ball security issues, he should be fine, so we'll see how that all plays out and whatnot, but Dave Gettleman can definitely surprise us. You know, I, I really, I tweeted out the other day, if there's a defensive tackle, I forget what school he goes to, is it South Carolina, maybe? I'm forgetting. I don't know. But some guy named Javon Kinlaw, uh, defensive tackle. I mean, that's a guy I can see Gettleman going crazy for. There's definitely a lot of offensive tackles in this draft that he can go for as well. Personally, I want Andrew Thomas. I mean, as we sit here on February 8th, I mean, Andrew Thomas would be the pick for me. But if they went with Jeffrey Okuda, it would not piss me off, honestly. So we'll see. I do hope they trade back. That's the number one option for me. But, you know, if they get Jeffrey Okuda number four overall, I'm not going to complain about it. It's a very important position. Okuda should probably be a top you know 20 cornerback in the NFL one day maybe even top 10 if everything pans out correctly so as I always say a lot of it depends on what team you go to I mean there are certain situations that aren't good for players I mean I'm trying to think of examples like Eric Ebron when he went to the uh the uh, Detroit Lions speaking of the Lions you know he went to the Lions played there for like four or five years never really had a big year then went to a different system went to the Colts and scored like 13 touchdowns then his best career year sometimes it happens with players they just go to a different team and they fit in better with the scheme and everything seems to work out better for them I don't know why it happens sometimes you know I guess a player or you know coaches like Joe Judge you know, I like when Joe Judge says this, that they're going to use their player's strengths, not their weaknesses. And sometimes when a player goes to a certain team or system, it works out better than the previous one. So if Okuda went to the Giants and worked with Patrick Graham, it might be able to work. I'm honestly not sure. I haven't seen Patrick Graham's defense play yet. And obviously, it's hard to tell based off his Dolphins defense because they did not have a lot of talent last year, honestly. So I can't hold that against them. But yeah, I wouldn't be mad about it, but we'll see what happens. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. This is my first one on the new channel. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. 
tell everybody. I want more subscribers here, obviously. That would be awesome. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed it just like the last channel, and I'll talk to you next time.